I'm the campaign manager here at Fin and Feather. Um, my style of outdoor activity is usually more based on, you know, I bring everything with me um, as opposed to living off the wild per se, um, more hiking, less bushcrafting. Um, but as the campaign manager here, um, we also sell a bunch of tools that can help you uh, survive and thrive in the great outdoors. Um, I'm going to do what I did the last time I talked to this class, uh, which is just kind of walk through the 10 essentials, which is a list that's been out there for a long time. This could apply to day hikes, this could apply for overnight trips, um, or breaking down in your car, anything like that. Um, so the first thing on the 10 essential list is navigation. Um, the old school navigation is going to be a map and a compass. Um, and then the biggest part of that map and compass um, that you need to bring with you is experience to use it. Um, a map and a compass doesn't do a whole lot of good if you aren't sure what to do with the things once you get it. It isn't really part of navigation, but I think is uh, one of the best things you can do in any situation is just letting a friend or family member know where you're going and when you're expected to be back. They don't necessarily need to know your daily itinerary. Um, but having someone who's not with you kind of having your back can do a lot for overall safety. Um, headlamp is something that I always have in my backpack if I'm taking a walk, even if it's in the morning. Um, if you get lost, uh, if you need to get out of a situation that you aren't expecting, having that extra light could be the difference between seeing the path and ending up in the middle of nowhere. Sun protection and clothing in layers and a shelter also. Um, getting sunburned is one of the most dangerous things that can happen, especially if you're in a desert area like California. Um, you can easily get blistering burns that can debilitate you, and combined with your hydration can put you in a really dangerous situation. Um, sunscreen comes in a chemical form and a physical form. Um, you guys know how you get that white look on your skin when you put on some sunscreens? Um, that's usually a zinc and titanium based mineral that's just coating your skin to reflect light away from you. Uh, chemical sunscreens are absorbed by your skin and they create a chemical barrier uh, to ultraviolet light penetrating your skin cells. A lot of times wearing long sleeves, wearing long pants, wearing a hat can keep you cooler um, than you would be if you're wearing just tanks and a short. Um, without sunscreen. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, a first aid kit could just be a couple band-aids. Uh, it could be a splint. It could be a burn kit. Um, the thing on long distance backpacking that we manage a lot is blisters and chafing. Um, and a lot of that is preparing ahead of time. If you're going to prepare for a long trip or even a weekend backpacking trip, wearing the pack a lot so your body's adjusted to where straps are rubbing. You know, not wearing brand new shoes on a trip so that you aren't getting blisters the whole way through can do a lot for your comfort and safety um, when you're out and about. Um, shelter, food, and water. Um, a shelter can be a tarp, a shelter can be a tent, a shelter can be a bivy that you're hiding inside. Um, for camping trips, it's all a balance between how much weight you're carrying, how much space it takes up, and then how much comfort you have inside that shelter. In areas that are hillier than Iowa, a uh, trekking pole does a lot to take off pressure from your joints. A walking stick does the exact same thing. Um, it's just bulkier and it doesn't collapse down. Um, what'd you say? Is, and that is cool, exactly. And that's really the most important part, right? Gotta look cool for those bears out there, right? Yeah, they like the most embarrassing thing is when you get out there and you can tell the animals are laughing at you. It's just, I had a night, um, so storing your food usually hung in a tree is recommended to keep it safe from bears, um, raccoons, mice, things like that. The reason um, why I bring trekking poles up uh, with the shelters, a lot of times if you wanted to do something like a tarp, you can do a lot of cool pitches using a trekking pole so that you can get something um, that might be your classic A-frame where you would string it from tree to tree or pole to pole, um, but you could also do something where you get more of a pyramid shape where you get coverage from more than just the two sides. 
Um, trekking poles can also be a great way to retrieve food bags from across a ravine. Um, they can give you, I don't think anyone's going to seek out a fight with wildlife using their trekking poles, but um, if you are in a situation where you're having an altercation with an animal, trekking poles can give you something to keep distance between you and them. Um, but for the most part, they just make the hike more enjoyable. They spread out uh, some of the energy used from just your legs to your arms also. They give you stability during water crossings. Um, on the downhills, you guys probably aren't having knee and joint problems yet, um, and I hope you never will, um, but trekking poles are really great for those of us who have had uh, some of those issues. So on where you're going, if you're here in Iowa, um, a lot of times the water is pretty gross in nature because of all the farm runoff um, and because of its proximity to um, areas that have been developed, whether it's farmland or cities. Um, when you get out west and out east um, to the more natural areas, um, you'll have more natural water sources like springs um, where the water isn't so inherently filled with chemicals. Um, but it's always still a good idea to have some form of water treatment. Um, water treatment can be as simple and lightweight as tablets. Um, they're usually chlorine or iodine based. Um, drops do the exact same thing. Um, this is going to kill uh, viruses, bacteria, uh, any cysts that might be in there um, to make it safe for you to drink and to keep you from getting Giardia. The next step up is a filter that's going to take out the physical particulate in addition to your bacteria, cysts, protozoa that you might not be able to see with the naked eye. Um, these are so small and easy to throw into a bag um, that I really like them even sometimes for day trips. Um, again, in Iowa, you're usually close enough to your car. You probably don't need a filter for the water. And this isn't going to take out chemicals. Um, and so I would like, if your water source is the Iowa River, I wouldn't drink water through this. Um, even though it might make it safe for me to drink, it's not going to take out the flavors of the Iowa River. Um, what we do have that I would consider drinking Iowa River water out are things like this. Which they grade as a purifier. Um, and these are going to take out those chemicals in addition to the physical uh, baddies in the water. Um, the uh, grail filter has a carbon and silver element that absorbs harmful uh, elements in the water. The Guardian um, is just a really um, intense filter uh, with a much smaller hole size um, that filters the water through. I didn't do a very good job of explaining that, but um, just a lot beefier version of the water filters. Um, the MSR product was designed with collaboration from the military, um, so this is something that the um, armed forces would use when they're traveling and needing to treat their water. The Grail filters are nice because they're the size of a water bottle. Um, it's not as heavy and it just works like a French press system. You scoop up your dirty water. This is your element that takes out the bacteria and the sediment. You're basically forcing the dirty water through that filter element and then you're left with the clean water on the inside. Uh, food, I think, is pretty self-explanatory. You, you throw a granola bar in your backpack. Um, uh, if you're backpacking, you might carry an extra meal for a day. Um, the good news is that we can go without food for a lot longer than water, um, and so you obviously want to make sure that you have adequate food for the trip that you're going on. Um, but most people don't need to go crazy with carrying an extra week's worth of food on a day hike, for example. All right, uh, let's talk about fire and knives. A lot of the things out west especially are extremely dry and a fire can be catastrophic to an entire region. Um, and so uh, being careful about wildfires 
Um, and so only starting fires in safe ways where you're not near brush, um, where you're not in an area that has fires banned are all really important. So firm pressure like that. And so we'll maybe go outside and we can let you guys all do that. That'll probably be the best for our carpeting. We do have um, scorch marks on our carpeting yeah. from playing around with these. <laughs> if I do the floor. And so you'd want to pair this with um, kindling that's really uh, dry and easy to catch on fire. Oh, shit. There you go. Yeah. So you're really pushing down hard and keeping it at that 90 degree angle. I took off all the bus See, there you go. plasma lighter um, and it's using electricity to make little arcs of plasma um, and then you would use that with something flammable to create your fire. So it's a little windy out here but... So is that rechargeable then? Yeah. Mine died. <laughs> How many uh, lights can you get off of That's one charge or time? or? That, I'm not sure on that. Um, that one's kind of duplicated as a power bank and a oh, sure. flashlight. So probably a long time. Um, <laughs> but I don't think it drains it super quickly. We've had that one to play with um, for a long time and we haven't had to recharge it yet. Nice. <laughs> Um, as an outdoor knife, this one could easily be my choice. It's 20 bucks. Uh, it holds an edge really well as a comfortable handle. It's kind of a everything you need and nothing you don't. There are a lot of different things that you can use. Knives and hatchets and um, sharp tools are all really cool. Um, I feel like you don't need as much as you might feel like you do. Um, a knife like this can do almost everything you need. Pairing it with a hatchet, you know, can be nice if you would need to get larger lumber split, things like that. Um, but uh, if you are excited by knives, there's a huge rabbit hole you can jump down into as far as different styles, different steels, different blades, uh, lengths and shapes, um, folding versus fixed blade. Um, same thing with the lighter. Don't touch the blades and don't stab your friends. Nah, nah. Um, uh, and then this one, it comes with a striker, um, but it's not a demo, so please don't use this striker. Um, but we have things like this that include your striker. There's a whistle on the striker. It's a big, beefy blade. Um, do you guys know a lot about knives? Kind of, sort of. Um, so some knives, um, exactly. Uh, so um, you can see the blade comes all the way down into the handle. Um, that part is called the tang. Um, and a full tang basically means it's a lot stronger. It's less likely to break here. Some knives will have a rat tail tang where it narrows down and goes into the handle like that. It's a little bit more vulnerable to breakage. This, when I'm backpacking, this is the knife that I carry. Um, it's got scissors, which is really helpful for first aid and blister management. It's got your tweezers, and then it just has this little baby knife. Um, obviously, you're not going to cut wood down with this little knife. Um, but for backpacking trips, um, where you have your stove and everything with you, um, this is one of the best. I just told the guys that this is the one of the most useful knives. I've ever had. Yeah. I concur.